All right, well, part two of my South Side. Thank you so much for joining me. If you missed part one, I'll put a link in the description below. But here's part two. I guess I talk about my work. It's a little bit longer than I initially assume. Just seems like there's a lot to talk about with orchids. I'm just pointing my camera now at the Cernua, my Sophronite Cerna or Catlia Cerna as you prefer. And this is one of the last mounts that I have that will go into a pot come spring. And I say that with a little bit of like, yeah, is that what I want to do? Because look, it's growing root tips. So of course, I've got the itchy urge to do something about it now because I don't like the look of this moss. I mean, it's fine underneath. It's just the surface, but it just bothers me. Still, I am going to wait. I'm going to do what I set out to do. I will wait for spring. After it has bloomed, it starts to push really new roots. And then that is when we're going to uh, repot her and set her up ridiculous styly. I think eight growths is what I'm counting at this point. That's what they look like. I've moved it from facing westwards, which is that direction, to facing southwards, which is that direction, because I want all these growths to actually come and grow towards the light and not be so flat and pressed into the base of the plant because when it comes to potting it up, it'll make life much easier. I'm trying to grow it in such a format that the structure for pot growing is already in place. See these little growths down here? If I had them on the west side, they would grow flat out as opposed to starting to push up towards the light. That is the plan. So let's see how it goes. And just a little look at my Brassavola fragrance here, Tubercolata. Doing quite well. What I've noticed though, is that it seems to dump old roots. So I've never, I didn't touch them. I didn't interfere with these roots. It just seems to be one of those that just takes a new root system over and leaves the other roots and they just die. I thought initially there was too much handling, but that's not the case because since it's been on this ninja mount, I have um, not touched any of these other roots and they are starting to shrivel up and die while it is producing a massive, beautiful, extensive root system. Now, the strange thing I've noticed about this one is that the new roots actually don't absorb the watering as much. They don't go any, they don't change color at all. They just stay white. Very, very odd. But uh, it's, it's fine. It's got these two new growths coming here. I have also moved it to face south as opposed to facing west because I want these new growths actually to move a little bit more forward, not be so sprawled out. It's a space thing, trying to keep them a little bit more contained in their shape. Just in case when in the winter I bring them inside my hanging space, it doesn't sort of get too crowded. So there's that. My exili is going nuts. If an orchid can go nuts, let's just say, they usually don't. But considering the little struggles that we've had with this orchid in the beginning of the year, me messing around with it, it's growing another new growth right there. So I'm really glad. I'm glad it's gonna just take to this mount and be much happier for it. Some growths are extending. So it, it's potential. I really would love to see this plant one day just be a little bit more bushy looking with more of these long growths here. Fun little orchid to grow. Now that it's found its forever place, very, very pleased. I can leave it a be and just take care of it. Tetragonia Dark Prince has been an issue this year just because there was always problems with scale from my least favorite nursery of all time. And it's a reoccurring theme, which we'll see just now. I have it under control. It is here now where it gets direct morning sun from this side, which is east. So I have never had it bloom for me. But meanwhile, we're battling some pests. You can't expect the orchid to do it all in one go. It's bulked up much better this year than it has in the previous two years that I've owned it. 
So that's something to take into consideration right there. I would love to see this one bloom one day. I still haven't figured out how best to keep it in, in sun, out of sun. So it's getting enough light now. We'll see. We'll see, at least I'm, I'm, I've got the scale here under control. I haven't seen any new ones for four weeks. Not to say that they're gone, but it's here in my line of vision and I keep watching every day and now it gets direct sun this time of the year. In the summer, I try to not keep it in the direct sun. It looks like it gets too dark far too quickly and I don't know, I don't want to stress this one further. Let's see if we can get something out of it for next year. Here's my second mount that is still considered for me organic. It's on a wood plaque and it was mounted earlier this year. And it's gone absolutely bonkers. This is Encyclia Garciana. Absolutely nuts. I don't know what to say about this orchid other than it's got to go into a pot. There's so many growths have already matured this year and a whole plethora of new growths are pushing out again. <sighs> new roots are coming and yeah, I sound frustrated, but only because if I had known about the vigor of this orchid prior to mounting it, it would have never gotten on a mount. It is a bit of a climber. So this is gonna be one dastardly project I don't think getting it off the mount is going to be a problem at all. I think most of these roots down here have failed by now, but it's bringing out new roots. I'm still going to wait until spring because I don't trust it one bit to go through the winter if I now take it apart. It should be an interesting project. I'll make a whole video just on this one because I am absolutely clueless as to how to proceed with dividing it it needs a ton of water, that's all I can say. But judging by its growth habit, I am almost certain that this is, well, it's gonna to have to be divided. Even though it's been living in a plate of water all summer, and I've gotten some stunning growths from it, no concertina leaves at all, but you can see that there's more coming out the top, and clearly it's not enough. So there is still these funky, this is an old growth from before the summer, but I'm still getting these. This is a new growth and it's doing it again. This orchid just cannot get enough. And it's a beast. I mean, the blooming is gonna be sensational when it gets around to it come spring, but still, yeah, midsummer, we're gonna have to do something. And again, midsummer, not a good time. I will figure something out. Should be interesting. Here is Dendrobium Roy Tokonaga. We had a radical repot. We literally took the root system to town, where as long time ago when I received it, I actually um, broke all the roots because they are like glass. But this time I was not going to be impressed or freaked out by this orchid. It wasn't gonna scare me. I went in there, no fear, cleaned up, Radically, I have a new growth coming. Roots are growing again, and it is almost pot bound, almost. So that's, you can see with Roy Tokonaga, if you ever repot one, or if you get one new, and you just hear the click clack of the roots, fret not, fear not, keep going, keep doing what you're doing. There may be a little bit of, you know, stress signs in the leaves, but they will perk up again really quickly and it has not stopped at all in this setup. I'm getting nubbins all over the place. I've got, I don't know, six or so coming all around. So possibly by March, April, there will be some blooms from Roy Tokonaga. And then here is my Alexandre cost with Polysema that we recently saw. Got some beautiful spikes coming in. It will be a first time bloomer. So yippee, yeah, yay. Very happy to see that. Whoops. You can already see the spotting on the buds. They're growing quite fast. They really are. They're not the, the Roy Tokonaga is a very, very slow in developing its buds. These guys, completely different. 
Not saying they're going to bloom quickly, but this has not taken long. Now these two don't live here. They live up on the top shelf of the structure behind me. I just took them down so that we could actually see the layer of the orchids behind these two on that top shelf. So what I'm going to do is be right back. And now we're looking at uh, Brassocatlia gyrac kiku. And my goodness, I had new growths this year. It was a reliable bloomer, past tense. Emphasis, past tense, it was. I had one spike come out here and it had one bud. And I came here this morning and the bud was gone. I don't know if something chewed it, jumped on it, broke it. I don't know where the bud is, it's gone. But that was this morning. What a shame. Totally like, you can see it snapped off. Hmm. Meanwhile, it should have had given me a little bit more than one bud, but I have nothing to fall back on. So no Gyrac Kiku blooms this year, I guess. What's there? What are you doing in there? Are you doing something or are you old? I can't tell. Maybe I should just get my fingers out of it. I don't know if that's a spike or not. Bizarre, bizarre. Now you see it, now you don't. Oh well, it was actually allocated to somebody, so that's a big shame. Soot kinoi. Look. <laughs> you think they're made of plastic? I lost a couple, but these guys just go on and on. It's like the little Duracell bunny. They just go on and on and on and on. How strange, how beautiful. I love it. A keeper. This has been for, in bloom, like two months now. Lori Mortimer is going over. But, you know, these two have been blooming side by side oh, for two months at least. I'm really, <laughs> really, really impressed with this. Never expected them to be so long lasting. No fragrance. But with a funky look like this, with the detail in those blooms, hey, I'll forgive you for not being fragrant. The Lori Mortimer is doing really well. I've got a new growth here. It's probably not going to grow much further now because its hot temperatures have passed, but at least I'm getting the same kind of structure as I did before. Very big, very juicy. I mean, it hasn't finished growing yet, so there's more to come. The question is when? This I wipe almost every third day with insecticide because the mealybug issue and it has so much happy sap. I'm gonna try and see if I can avoid having the same happening to the new growth as it is with this because all this is happy sap and sun damage. The combination of the two. Because this one is when you touch it, it's almost like it's constantly sticky. But here I've been wiping the happy sap as best as I can, as often as I can, whenever it's relevant. Because I want to see if I can avoid getting these marks on the leaves. Hey, if I don't succeed, no biggie. As long as the orchid is doing fine, then that's, that's the most important thing. But I love this growth. It's got this beautiful spring green going to it. Very fleshy, very strong leaves. Fantastico. Right, where else? Where else? Oh yes, let's go down a shelf. Without falling, that would be good. So down here, in the first part we were over there. Down here, I have my Repiculus candidates already living their vida here. That's the Enfelsiae there on the right. Absolutely acclimatized. I don't have to worry about it. I don't have any new growths coming on that one, but there is like a little sheath trying to develop in that one growth. I'm not holding my breath. I need these guys just to acclimatize and then we can work on everything else next year. And this is the Lucasiana here on the left. Still looking smart. I love these square pots. And that's what I want to pot my uh, flava in. 
one of these square pots so that they can all, all the bigger reticulous lalias can all be like a little checkerboard. Wouldn't that be cute? <laughs> Diana, doing really well, look at this. The new growth here on the right, where are you? Yeah, there, this one on the right. That's what it came with. It's extended a little bit, but it's very slow. But hey, you keep producing roots like that one, keep going. That's what I'm looking for, roots that don't dry off at the tip at this time of year. Great advantage and get into that media. So these are the three candidates I have here right now. Arpophila has just joined them recently because I want it to have more morning sun. And this whole little lower shelf gets a lot of morning sun. It's been very protected throughout the summer because it was a very weak orchid. I lost quite a few leaves on the bulbs here. But I must say that this is what they all came and looked like. But I have to say that all this, this is my new growth of this year, the only one, but it is now rooted in. And it's, a, it, for me now, this is a healthy plant, even though it doesn't look like it. But I have no worries about this one anymore. Roots are going down into the media. This is a happy, happy Rubiculus lelia. So now I'm exposing it to direct sun, being the winter sun, it's not a biggie. It won't stress it out. And eventually the other Rapiculus lelias will join the fold and this whole shelf will be filled up because it, they all get morning sun. In the meantime, this is my ICU area from Schwerter. One of the ICU areas, the other ones has now been cleared since about six, seven months. I don't have some of those orchids anymore. I've had enough. But my Brassavola little stars on the right and my gy Kirtara gyrat kiss on the left there. Scale issues and joining them is the only Tolumnia I got from Schwerter, also the Mocha Dot, scale issues. Now, the Mocha Dot did really well this summer, grew a lot of fans and it was on my Tolumnia wall in the back that we saw in part one. And then one day it just looked funny and I took it down and it was infested. So what you see here, mealybug scale, fuzzy scale, whatever it is, it is not welcome. And yes, they look, they're dead, trust me. They're deader than dead. But I think so is my orchid. And isn't it strange how I've got problems with all my Schwerter orchids developing similar issues. The Tetratonia Dark Prince, Kirchara Gyrak Kiss, and then my Little Stars, my Mocha Dot. I mean, that's just this year. That's four orchids there that I've mentioned that have the problem. And I mean, I'm, okay, I'm on top of it, but it's not, it's not helping the orchid at all, at all. So last year I lost maybe five orchids. This year from that same order I've lost, I'm gonna probably lose the mocha dot. And yeah, then these two candidates are not far away from being dodgy and out the door. If and the only reason saving grace on my little stars is it's growing roots in the corner here. My Kachara kiss saving grace is that there's two new growths coming right there and they might produce new roots and then we shall see what happens in the spring, whether I take the whole orchid back and start it afresh or what's going on. Two years and this is what I have to show for. We're going down. There are less and less tags from Schwerter in my collection. Look at what's coming here to the left though. CG Roebling is coming back. We're gonna have another set of blooms here. I think that's three buds, one, two, three. So yay, happy days. And here's where the other orchids live that are from Schwerter. So these two epidendrums here in the front, this one and the one over there, very slow to get going, but this is where they live. 
and finally I'm seeing some action. But uh, this is going to be the example for a video that was requested about setback and stalling orchids. These two candidates are perfect. So we'll see more of those later. And then you've seen the Epicatlias over here, the Rene Marquez crosses. One is with Digbiana, and the other one is, a, I'll put up a pop-up. It's a name I always forget. So these are lovely. I have to say that the biggest attraction here for me is, yes, the blooms are nice, but I have to say that an orchid for me also means a lot when I can see beauty in its growth. And these canes have that burgundy color to them. Gotta be careful with my robling. I don't know if it comes across well on camera, but there's a burgundy, deep, rich color to these canes. So attractive, I have to say. That is the main feature, because obviously when she blooms, she blooms, and then what, what do you have to look at at the rest? But they both have that characteristic, and I think it's gorgeous. My Lelia perinii is resting. It's done its thing. So this year I've gotten the Lelia perinii to bloom for two weeks. Let me find a better angle. Maybe that's better. So this year my perinii bloomed for two weeks. Beautiful, finally, very happy. Um, I still don't have the leaf size that I can have, the potential, you know, but we're getting the height. So next year she needs to have a good cleanup. Not right now, but that is to be addressed next year. Now she's not gonna do anything for the next six to seven months. That's the life of a perinii. Here I have my Coilus stylus ciliaris. Big repot out of lava rock semi-hydro into Lekka with self-watering. My nerves were a little bit shot after that video, but we did it, we managed and look, woohoo. Root, 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 action, doing its thing. So we've got the timing right. We did the right thing, in my opinion, and we're not skipping a beat. Look at where those bulbs are gonna be. Look at that. Look, yeah, she's, she's gonna be a good one. She's fine, good stuff. And then, here is my little Monachica in the orchid top. This is the replacement Monachica from the one I lost earlier this year. Is it just me or does it seem to be a little bit dark here? Hmm, I hope you can see this. All right, I raised the curtain, so maybe we can have a better look at it. In the orchid top, my Mona Chica. I keep water filled at the bottom now. I don't spray as much anymore around the top. I keep the microfiber sometimes moist. Today it's dry, on and off, on and off. I don't want to overdo it with water now on this orchid. I know that she grew a root when I was repotting her. I have not seen the root appear anywhere on the outside. So I'm very, very cautious about how this orchid is getting established in my environment. She's new, she is a replacement, and I don't want to have to do that again. My Lelia iricolor lives back here, gets lots of lots of sun when I don't have the curtain down, but um, light, plenty of light, and we only, we saw her recently, but that, this is her location south. The angle of the sun now hits her directly. On a cloudy day, I keep the curtain up. On a very bright day, I still put the curtain down because of the intensity of that sun, especially if there's no breeze going. I love it. Look at that growth. Oh, I just gotta make sure I don't mess it up. And here's my big girl, not so big from my growth this year. They haven't reached the size that they could. So this is one of my new growths. This is my Catlia guatemalensis. And this is the growth size she could get. But my two new growths are like uh, three quarters. There's one in the back there. Three quarters of its potential. But they have sheathed. 
So we're going to see some flowers eventually. However, you know, first year with me, I got her earlier this year. And from a video request that I got as well, this is going to be the candidate for acclimating, transitioning into semi-hydro. So we'll see more of her and talk about her a little bit more then. And I'm going to love and leave you with one more thing. This is my popcorn Haruri. Look at this. Yes, they look a little bit different and they look a little bit tired, but they're still around. My first spike of this year. Aren't they just adorable with that peachy pink? The plant is doing really well and it also lives on my south side, but facing east because of the morning sun that it gets and also because I'm training this spike face to face south, so I don't bump it and knock it. So actually the orchid where it lives hangs like this against the gate. So this spike is facing south, but for purposes of the video, I just brought her down to show you after before. Oh, best spike ever with branching and with all the different phases of the colors going on. Look at that contrast. Incredible. So these have been allocated. We will see them again and discuss them in further detail. But as a sneak peek, remember, if there's an orchid that you saw, I just zipped past it. It was just a quick tour of orientation and where they are. Always get back to me if you want it featured with more detail, and I'll be happy to do that. Thank you very, very much. Have a wonderful day. Take care and stay safe. Bye.